Baik, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alright. Uh, InsyaAllah today is my turn lah. Okay, untuk saya, uh, uh, saya take over lecture ni. Kalau kita ikutkan um, uh, syllabus yang diberi ataupun uh, steam of work yang telah diberikan. Okay. Uh, minggu kita berada mungkin dalam minggu ke tujuh lah sekarang. Okay. Minggu ke tujuh. So this is where I come in lah. Okay, I come in. Uh, so we are going to do data analysis, descriptive analysis, univariant, bivariant, and multivariant lah. Alright. Uh, flow dia tak mungkin tak sama macam ini. Tetapi uh, we will cover everything lah. We will cover everything. Alright. So today saya akan mulakan dengan research process overall yang merangkumi all of this, all of these topics first. And then next week we will go into uh, descriptive and uh, univariate and bivariate and uh, data analysis ni berlaku di dalam itu tu sendiri lah. Okay, di dalam itu sendiri. So today's one is just uh, introduction of the research process. Okay, research process secara overall dulu. And then we will go into descriptive next week and then univariate and bivariate lah. Alright. So today is just uh, a process to do, a research process on how to do this. Alright. Uh, Ashikin, apa khabar di sana? Baik, Doktor. Awak dari fakulti mana pula? Saya sama juga. Uh, FSPU. FSPU Architecture juga? Uh, bukan. Uh, saya uh, saya juru ukur bangunan, BS. Oh, BS. Uh -huh. okay. Tapi saya punya major untuk research saya more to FM, pengurusan facility. Facility management. Awak pun uh, lecturer jugalah. Ah uh, bukan, saya di JKR. Di JKR Seri uh, uh, HQ di KL. Di bangunan Mara tu, sebelah bangunan Mara tu. Ah uh, saya uh, yang Mara tu cawangan uh, arkitek. Saya di dekat dengan Bank Negara, Jalan Sultan Salahuddin. Oh okey okey. Yang okay, menara okay. baru tu. Oh yes yes, saya pernah nampak cantik cantik cantik. Cantik cantik. Okay. Kita tahu <laughs> Kita, saya tahu yang bangunan JKR tu so baru ni pergi KL dah lama tak lalu kat pertama tu tiba-tiba tengok eh, ada satu bangunan baru kat situ. So, agak terkejut di situ lah. Okay. Berapa lama you dah berada di JKR? Dah 11 tahun. Oh, So you have a lot of experience dalam <laughs> uh, bidang uh, foto? Uh, BS lah. Uh, your background is BS lah. Ya yeah, betul. Okay. okay. So alright lah. So tanyah lah kerana Melapori, okay, to join the apa tu, uh, program ini, Tania saya ucapkan, and uh, saya tabik spring lah kepada Izat dan Shikin dan lain-lain kerana buat benda ni secara part time. Uh, sejujurnya, kalau saya berada di tempat tuan-tuan dan perempuan, uh, I don't think I can do it. Sebab uh, baru nak jaga seorang ni pun dah pernah kelang kelibut, okay. So I I wish you luck, insyaAllah, saya percaya dan yakin you all can do it. Uh, ini semua Orang kata dunia aja boleh 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 tak ada masalah boleh aja tak ada masalah okay if you put your heart and soul to it insyaallah kita boleh percaya juga alright uh, and then orang kata there's no turning back lah teruskan je teruskan je susah tak susah memang susah lah okay uh, it's not going to be it's not to say it's easy it's not to say it's difficult it's doable okay boleh dibuat okay and I'm sure orang awak semua dah besar uh, tak perlu marah marah lagi <laughs> tak perlu marah marah lagi Uh, semua dah okey dah. So you should be fine lah. I'm, sh I'm sure you'll be fine. Okay. Uh, a little bit introduction about myself. My name is uh, Muhammad Imran Muhammad Arif. Uh, faculty, kalau faculty lama, namanya FSKM, Faculty Science, Computer dan Mathematics. Uh, nama faculty sudah bertukar kepada saya pun tak ingat. Panjang sangat. Baru-baru uh, ni, uh, faculty saya bergabung dengan MESCOM. Sure, tuan-tuan berapa ingat. Lepas tu, ada internal problem. So, MESCOM decided to go up. So, maka kami digabungkan atau masih bergabung dengan Information System Management. Information System Management lah. Di, uh, itu bergabung dan uh, saya berada di Jabatan Sains Komputer. Okay. So, my my background is nothing to do with uh, FSPU. Cuma ada kawan-kawan ramai itu sahaja. But uh, di dalam semasa PhD saya, One part of my uh, or my data analysis was more to quantitative. So di situlah 
uh, my you know, kata, my statistic knowledge again okay saya bukannya pencara statistik uh, background saya ataupun pengalaman saya hanyalah sekadar untuk melepaskan diri daripada PhD okay melepaskan diri daripada PhD so daripada itu my, saya belajar sendirilah belajar sendiri dan itulah skill saya okay nak cakap terror memang tak terror lah tapi it's an ongoing process okay it's an ongoing process so i uh, saya mengajar subjek uh, di UBE 923 ya sudah saya kira dalam 3 to 4 years lah dalam bidang ini okay uh, my uh, campus is in campus tapah lah duduknya di Ipoh kerjanya di tapah so door to door sejam perjalanan saya lah sejam perjalanan saya uh, orang kata jauh dia betul jauh tapi sudah biasa so this is where I stay and then uh, my wife is working with UTP kami di dua-dua bidang yang sama lah IT juga. So balik-balik rumah kami bercakap komputer je lah. Okay. Alright. So that is a little bit about myself. So Shikin uh, seorang uh, B, uh, BR apa tu? Uh, Billing Surveyor bekerja dengan JPR and Izzat pencarah di Architecture. So thank you so much and I hope you will be you will enjoy my class as much and I hope to get good experience from you as well. Alright. So sebelum kita mula, right, and our class will not go for three hours, jangan risau. Saya pasti dan yakin tuan-tuan dan puan-puan tak boleh lah, we cannot go for that long lah. Saya takut nanti bukan hanya Izzat dan Shikin lost, saya pun total loss juga. Okay, we will do as much as we can um, se secara mana lah. Uh, we won't have any breaks in between kecuali jika perlu. We will try to just continue all the way here. If you have any questions, please free to ask me at any time here. Kalau saya tak tahu jawapan, nanti saya carikan jawapan untuk tuan-tuan dan puan-puan. Okay. Uh, boleh nampak skrin ni? Boleh, Dr. Okay. So, we start with research process. Eh? We start with research process. But sebelum itu, let me just go to the last slide. Okay. Last slide. So this is a five minute test, okay? Tidak perlu jawab sekarang. Look at these numbers. Initial data gathering, further data gathering, deduction, observation, theory, formulation, hypothesis, and data analysis. So this is the process. Okay, okay? this is the process. So saya letakkan yang pertama is observation. Yang kedua, yang ketiga, yang keempat, dan seterusnya is kerja tuan-tuan dan perempuan. Okay. So just have a look at this. Selepas habis uh, chapter ini, you are you will know how to put, where to put the numbers. Okay. So jawapan Shikin mungkin berbeza dengan jawapan Izzat. Jawapan saya mungkin berbeza dengan Izzat. Tetapi mana-mana pun boleh. But ada yang perlu diutamakan dulu. Ada yang perlu you can carry forward lah. Alright. But basically This is the research process. So you might say this research process tak sama pun sebelum ni dengan buku-buku lain. Ya yeah, betul, memang tak sama. But basic idea is the same. Okay, basic idea is the same. You start with research with observation. Because before you get to the problem, you observe first. Okay, you observe uh, based on your experience, based on your readings, based on uh, your past experience, observation, you perhatikan keadaan, uh, scenario, uh, ekonomi kita. So based on that, you come up with certain questions. Based on that, you try to link with certain problems. Okay. So whether your numbers will be different from others, it's okay. Okay, it's okay. There is no right or wrong, but only for certain Uh, elements contohnya macam data analysis ataupun hypothesis formulation ada cara-cara there, there is a way that you have to follow okay there is a way you have to follow all right that is the, the end of it okay so now let's go back and start where we all right so the, this project oh, sorry research process is to provide just a familiarity so what we want to understand in this uh, chapter is just 
to familiarize process, method, and approach. Okay, so what are we going to do? How are we going to do it? Just to get ourselves familiarized. Okay, the research obviously cannot start with something you feel I think it should be done this way, but you have no proof, you have no evidence, you have not done any observation, you just cannot sit under a tree. Aku rasa nak buat something on education. Aku rasa nak buat something on this side, on this side. But what is the issue? People will ask you, so apa persoalan dia? What is the issue? What is the issue yang hebat? Sampaikan you want to look in, you want to look deeper into it. So you have to highlight this, okay? And when you do a research, when you do a research, especially in the PhD level, it has to be rigor and relevance. It has to be, you have to think to the deepest level, okay, to the deepest level, okay? But as you go into the deepest level, banyak cabang dia, banyak cabang dia. Kita ambil Shikin lah tadi. Shikin kata, she wants to focus on FM, facility management. Okay, that's good. At least you have already a subtopic you want to look at. Banyak lagi topic-topic on BS, but she focus, she wants to focus on FM. I'm sure there is a reason for it. So you focus on that and you go deep into that. Okay, you go deep into that. Bukannya kita focus, okay, sekejap on FM, sekejap on this side, sekejap on government buildings, sekejap on this side. Okay, so many areas. You get one area, look into it, go deep into it. And you also have to remember whatever outcome you get is not solving the real is to solve a problem but it cannot solve the problem as a whole. Masalah dunia ni sentiasa akan berada. Masalah kebuluran memang akan ada. You're not trying to solve, you're not trying to solve the world's problem but only you're trying to give evidence it can be solved using this method. Boleh. Or you're trying to say that benda ini terjadi based on this. Okay, based on this. Alright. So, upon completion of this subject, you should have critical thinking, ability to seek out and organize, evaluate relevant information, time management skills, communication skills, collaborative skills, and being independent. Okay, so these are the general skills that you need. Because in academic research or PhD research or master's research, you are independent. Okay? At the end of that period, you are the expert of that particular topic or that particular area. Yes, you might have all the uh, relevant uh, working experience. You pernah belajar, you pernah buat topic ini master masters, you have read a lot that makes you an expert. But in academic world, it's slightly different. You have to explain everything with some sort of evidence. But what are the evidence? If you say the population of Sri Iskandar is X amount of people, provide evidence. If you say the population of male and female dalam UIJM Perak is this, this number, this number, where is the proof? Anything in academic research needs to have proof. Or something young people have said that is relevant to your research. All right. So here you will come up with some proposals. You are can uh, book, uh, you are can uh, do your research proposal here, okay? And you will look into every critical uh, literature scholar, lah. Okay, every critical uh, literature review. Okay. So you also look into that, lah. This is the course as a rule. But again. Memanglah dalam literature review, you are supposed to read banyak journal, banyak proceeding, banyak ni. Memang akan terjadi satu hari nanti, uh, kita banyak membaca. Okay. Is that, as for now, berapa banyak journal or proceeding or article yang dah baca? Uh, so far, 73. 73. Uh. Uh, Shikin? So far saya tak ada, tak sampai lah 70 tu. Tapi ha. tapi lebih lah daripada 50. Okay. Sebab ada yang saya dah start <laughs> filter macam yes. bila saya dah tengok scope tu kan. Ha -ha. Yes, betul. Yes. 
So you can read, continue reading. There is no problem in reading. But as you read, you have to be clever enough lah. Uh, memanglah saya pun masa awal-awal dulu saya baca page 1 sampai page 10. Page 1 sampai page 5. Baca segala daripada depan sampai ke belakang. Depan ke belakang. Semua benda yang saya baca semuanya bagus. Apa masalah yang tak bagus ni? Okay. I keep on reading and reading. But insyaAllah towards the end bila you dah sampai dekat method, bila you dah sampai dekat defense proposal tu, you akan dapati bahawa daripada uh, 100 lebih atau 200 lebih journal yang you baca, cuma yang akan berada atas meja awak hanyalah mungkin dalam 10 saja. And these 10 papers are the most relevant to you. So you will refer to this all the time, all the time, all the time. Based on some papers, some papers is more of your topic. Some papers might be just, apa namanya, just on the method side only. Okay, so there are certain types of paper lah yang you would say is good, tapi only on certain topics sahaja. Ataupun you baca paper tu 10 page, yang you nak hanyalah dalam paragraph yang, uh, paragraph yang ketiga, column 4. Itu saja. Yang lain-lain tu not relevant. Masa, menja, masa ni macam buang masa je baca. Ya? Baca daripada page pertama sampai terakhir. Last sekali yang you, you nak tu yang you you rasa relevant is only one short thing. Okay. But keep it up. Baca je. Okay. There is no shortcut of not reading lah. Uh, kalau boleh saya dah suggest ambil je semua paper tu repose minum air dia. Tapi tak ada. Okay. It's not possible. You just have to keep on reading and reading and reading juga. Alright, so these are some references that I use for these slides lah. Okay, for this lecture. Alright, definition of research. Systematic process of answering question to acquire new knowledge. Again, we are talking about knowledge. We are not talking about information. Okay, we are talking about knowledge. We are not talking about information. We are not talking about data here. At the end of the process, we want to get something new. We want to get a new knowledge. So, dalam data science, dalam area data science, data, information and knowledge are three different things. Tiga benda yang berbeza. Data is only numbers. Okay, data is only numbers. What are numbers? Jumlah staff. Those are numbers. Ada 130. Jumlah Okay, jumlah staff wanita, 140. Those are numbers. Based on this, you make up the information. What are information? Daripada data ini, you boleh bahagikan. Daripada staff 130 lelaki, you boleh bahagikan. Uh, 10 datang daripada Ipoh, 50 datang daripada Manjong. Uh, breakdown lah, that is information only. Alright, those are information. Knowledge is something new. Something new that you can gather from this information. Example, um, now we know that staff you attend Perak, uh, Sri Iskandar, ada 130 male, and from that, 50 or 60 orang duduk di Manjung. So now we can tell the management, contohnya, since ramai staff duduk di Manjung, it is feasible for us to provide a bus service dari Manjung ke Sri Iskandar, because this is new information. Pelajar-pelajar saya kebanyakannya berasal daripada Pahang, Kelantan, Terengganu. So now they can propose to the management, uh, balik raya is feasible untuk mereka dapatkan bas untuk masuk kampus. So ramai pelajar-pelajar yang duduk di sana. So in getting a bus will be useful. So this is new knowledge. Okay, This is new knowledge. Something new that you get. And in research, you, start, you should question how professional practice is conducted because you want to contribute something new. Okay, In research, there are two contributions. Satu, kita contribute to academic. Satu, kita contribute to practice. To the body of practice. Okay, Because orang di luar not academic will ask, apa yang you dapat daripada research ni? What are you going to get? Oh, sorry. What are we going, uh, what are we going to get? So you have to contribute something back to them. Let's say you do a guideline, you do a framework, so you tell them, kalau you gunakan framework ini, maka you can save as much, save time. Okay, you can save money. So these are the frameworks that we uh, can use in, in your area. Okay, and there is a key academic, you should also contribute something. 
Research must be controlled, rigorous, systematic, valid, verified, empirical, and critical. Okay, you should be controlled. So you have to have a control areas. What Peter Tana, the subject or the is influenced by anything else. Mereka jawab survey you atau dasar terpaksa. Okay, atau dasar you paksa mereka. You paksa student you. Kalau kau tak jawab soalan aku, selamatlah your final exam. Okay, so you cannot do that. It has to be controlled, betul. But you cannot be authoritative. Tak boleh authority. You cannot, oh, tak boleh macam ni. You kena jawab soalan saya. Okay, and it has to be rigorous. If you say that you are looking at engineers who has five years experience, you have to be, you kena specify betul-betul. Engineers yang pernah bekerja dalam area ini. Engineers yang ada experience area ini. Or non-engineering background. Okay, things like that. And, and then it has to be systematic. It has to be valid. Cannot be based on media myth. Uh, media memang, oh, uh, media cakap ataupun uh, kita ambil dalam Facebook. Si akak keli punya info. Uh, that is not, it's not betul lah. Okay, we have to get solid proof. And it cannot be on personal experience. Yes, personal experience is a stepping stone, but it cannot be cited. It cannot be saying that, oh, masa saya di sana dulu, saya, I did it this way. Yes, you can use your personal experience sebagai satu permulaan, starting, but it has to be supported by something else. It cannot be just on, based on my experience, masa aku kerja dekat sana dulu, Aku selalu buat macam ni. Okay. You can start like that. But it has to be based on certain ideas juga. Kena relevant. Kena kaitkan dengan certain theories. Kena kaitkan dengan something juga. Baru boleh masuk. Alright. And then we go into theory pula. Okay. Theory. What is theory pun ada satu hal juga. Okay. Theory is a well-defined concept and interrelationship. An idea expressed as symbol. So there are theories that you need to also look into. Some theories is relationship, association, temporal, causal. Kita ambil yang senang. Temporal means in a certain condition, this happens. Okay, theory mengatakan bahawa in a certain condition, this happens. Example, cuaca panas. So theory mengatakan bahawa bila cuaca panas, Orang banyak minum air. Okay. Orang banyak makan ice cream. So we can say, we can we can also assume that harga ice cream ataupun jualan ice cream akan naik. Eh, buat macam macam tu. Okay. We can try to do a relationship. Okay. Something is related to another thing. Okay. Something is related to another thing. The more you cycle, the more you lose weight. That can also mean causal effect. Cause of this, you banyak exercise or you banyak cycle, you banyak lari, you banyak hilang, uh, you lose apa? You lose weight. Or associational, dia berkait one after another. Okay, one process after another process, and then after dia ada association dia. Okay, uh, contohnya gaji lagi tinggi, let's say kita dapat increment gaji. So, increment gaji is associated with job satisfaction. Okay, is associated with job satisfaction. The higher your salary is, more job satisfaction you get. Okay, and it should be also other complexity there. Is it high? Is it low? Is it, macam mana, how do you relate this association? How do you relate something to another? Contohnya, kita nak kaji, we want to look at losing weight. Saya nak, kuru, uh, saya nak kurus. So, there are three methods yang you baca. Cycle, puasa dan lari. So, these are the three methods of losing weight. Now, you, you say that there are three methods of losing weight, but which of this method has the highest contribution? That is one. And can we say that lagi banyak saya berlari, lagi banyak saya lose weight, atau sama saja. Okay. Even though memang dia ada kaitan, tapi we must also provide some 
assurance that ada kaitan antara benda ni. So it's, is it going to be higher or is it going to be lower as well? And then there's also proposition, relationship. Apa kaitan di antara ini dengan ini? Apa kaitan di antara ini dengan ini? Example, macam tadi lah. Berlari dengan losing weight. What is the relationship? Okay, so that we will come to hypothesis lah. Again, if you have any questions, please stop me uh, as we go along. Okay, as I explained to you, associational, associational is co correlation relationship. Correlation is correlation is how is it linked to another? Example, berlari dan losing weight. How is it related? Lagi banyak kita berlari, lagi banyak kita lose weight. Or trust and shopping. Bila kita ada high trust, kita akan shop lebih ke tempoh. So, there are, there are relationship that we need to look at. Temporal relationship, macam saya kata, over a set period of time. Dia berlaku, okay. Harga ini akan naik only for this period. Harga jualan, uh, let's say, a watermelon akan naik during this period. Harga jualan akan naik during this period. Harga-harga telur akan naik during this period. Lepas tu, dia drop. Okay. Uh, causal relationship, dia berkaitan lah. What causes this to happen? Cause and effect. Lagi banyak kita lari, lagi banyak kita lose weight and things like that. So, dimensional of research. Okay. Ada yang exploratory, uh, exploration. Ada you want to describe. Ada you want to explain. Ini ada lah. We are going along this. Then, in your line of work, we are using basic research. Okay. Or, okay, basic research. Or some of you might also do applied research. You look at a certain problem and then you try to solve that problem. And then you are also looking at time time dimension. Adakah you nak mengkaji, uh, you nak mengkaji project-project uh, pada tahun ini dengan ini, di antara tahun ini dengan ini, ataupun you nak mengkaji projek di antara selepas kegawatan ekonomi atau sebelum kegawatan ekonomi, ataupun you nak kaji projek-projek yang berada di tengah-tengah tahun. Okay, so these are cross -cut. Or you want to see longitudinal. Longitudinal ni lama lah. The start of the project and end of the project. Okay, maybe you want to find out uh, stuff Staff, staff satisfaction. Our, our project, semua staff happy. As you go along, 6 bulan, 7 bulan, 8 bulan, 9 bulan, our staff semua tak happy. That is long way to do now. Berada dalam satu jangka masa yang panjang. And then you can do how you collect your data, you can do quantitative or qualitative lah. Quantitative is based on numbers. Qualitative is based on what research, what observation. You duduk di rumah orang asli, you observe them. You try to think, apa yang orang tengah buat? You observe them, you interview them, oh, diorang cakap macam ni, you tulis, you transcribe, or you do observation, you perhatikan, how do they talk to each other? You perhatikan jumlah kereta yang lalu pada jalan ini. Okay, you do observation. Okay, uh, you do observation at certain periods of time. Pukul 5 petang macam mana rupanya, pukul 8 macam mana rupanya, pukul 10 macam mana rupanya. You do observation. That is qualitative. Quantitative is you come up with a set of questions, survey, bagi, dapatkan respons, analyze, berapa ramai yang suka, berapa ramai yang tak suka. That is how you do quantitative. Secara basic lah. Okay. I prefer quantitative. Sebab I like numbers. Numbers won't lie to you. Okay. Because kalau 10 orang suka something, ada number dia. Ada number dekat situ yang mengatakan bahawa the 10 people who like it. Okay, there are numbers there. Numbers can be easily proved. You bagi survey, provided you get good response, you can see the numbers. Alright, so theory approach, you can either follow deductive or inductive. That means you start with the theory, cari relationship and cari data. Or you can do inductive, you cari data dulu, what sort of concept, and then you get a theory. The usual side, uh, uh, the usual uh, way 
more easy way is to bring deductive law. Theory, and then you find the logical relationship, and then you find the empirical data. Okay. Contohnya macam the theory of buying, theory pembelian. Okay. So you can apply that theory to so many fields. Okay, so many fields. All right. That is called deductive. Kita, kita bermula dengan deductive and then we go down into empirical. Empirical data bermaksud you do your data collection. That is empirical data. All right. So empirical data, deductive, arrival. Okay, kali ini satu contoh lah saya ambil dari internet. So, dalam ni macam CSI lah. Sampai dekat scene tu. Okay. You try to think what has happened. And then you do the hypothesis dalam kepala you. Okay. Pencuri tu mungkin masuk daripada sini. Then you test the hypothesis. You buat observation. Pergi tengok kat pintu. Pergi tengok kat tingkap. And then you confirm. Kalau inductive. Okay. You pergi kat crime scene tu. You look. Alright. And you think balik. Apa yang berlaku kat sini. Alright, you think. You heard ada break in dekat rumah tu. Okay, now you start to think in your mind. Pencuri masuk rumah. So, mungkin dia masuk daripada tingkap, mungkin dia masuk daripada pintu, mungkin dia masuk ni. But you have not seen the evidence. Ini semua your, based on your experience saja. Now, when you go in, you start looking around. Benda tu dah ada dalam kepala. Okay, that is inductive. And then finally, you come with theory. Kalau deductive, you come in kosong. Okay, kita arrive dulu, kita tengok dulu lah. Okay, okay. We only know ada pencuri masuk. So when we come in, we start looking around, then we develop hypothesis. Okay, pencuri tu mungkin masuk di sini. Alright. And then we buat observation. Ya betul, dia masuk ke pintu, tingkap semua. Then we do the confirmation. Okay, ada tapak kiri kat sini. Hello, are you all with me? Okay ke? Shikin? Is that okay? Tak okay, doktor. Okay, doktor. Ada seorang lagi baru masuk. Puan, uh, Puan Jana eh. Hello, hello. Dia tengah. Right. And we also look at paradigm. Research is based on assumption about the fundamental nature of social reality and how we learn about social reality. So you can be a positivist, you can be interpretive or you can be critical. Now, what is all this? Alamak, ini apa benda pula ni? Okay. So, positive, I always like to say, is based on numbers. Kalau the number says 10%, maka 10% lah. That is very positive. Kalau the number says 90, maka 90% lah. You know that number. So, you know 90% likes, 90% likes to eat something. Ada numbers dia kat sini. Uh, interpretive, you go there and you interpret what could happen. You do observation. You do look dekat, let's say you want to learn about the culture of orang asli. Okay, kita tak tahu what's the culture of orang asli. So you go in, you live with them, you observe them and then you interpret what are, what are they trying to do. To interpret kat situ. Right, kita interpret kat situ. Okay, that's how you do it. Um, let me tell you a little story lah. Okay, kita masuk cerita lah sikit supaya you tak mengantuk. Baru ni, uh, uh, raya baru ni saya raya di Melaka lah. Melaka. My wife is from uh, Bandar Hilir. Okay, saya di Melaka. And saya sampai, sebelum raya terkejut berlaku, saya dah sampai lah. Uh, tahu raya terkejut, so saya sampai. Well, I came on uh, Friday. Friday lah. So, sempat asmai Jumaat di Masjid Bandar Hilir. To my surprise, masjid itu ramai Bangla lah. Ramai Bangla tu. Mungkin masjid itu berada di Pekan, seorang orang Bangla lah kat situ. And to my very surprise, setiap orang Bangla yang bayar zakat kat situ ialah dia orang bayar RM21. To my surprise, dia orang bayar RM21. Harga RM21 ni, kalau you tahu, ialah harga nasi basmati. And saya yakin dan pasti mereka tak makan nasi basmati. Tapi they choose the highest kat situ. And mereka juga Uh, I've seen, yang saya nampak di situ not only bayar zakat and also sumbang extra untuk masjid kat situ juga so this is my interpretive so daripada situ saya merasakan orang-orang Bangla ni macam mana dia boleh hidup di Malaysia is because I think lah rezeki mereka berkat lah kot okay? 
ada keberkatan kat situ. So they don't, they feel that they must pay the highest. Okay, they pay the highest. Set to say that hari tu bila nak bayar tujuh, empat belas, dua puluh satu ni saya tengok dalam Facebook ramai orang mempertikaikan nak bayar tujuh ke empat belas ke dua puluh satu. Tapi orang Melayu, Bangla tak, dia bayar je dua puluh satu. If that's the highest, that's the highest. And then I, I think in a few a few years ago, uh, even kalau mereka nak buat daging korban pun, mereka, they will choose the most expensive or the most uh, lembu yang paling sehat, lembu paling sadar lah. Uh, kalau masyarakat kita, uh, lembu yang good price lah, uh, good price only. So based on that, into, kalau kita nak relate, you observe that and you got interpretation based on what, what can you interpret from this? What can you analyze from this? Okay. And if you are looking at critical pula, critical is you get the data, but yet you do another observation juga. Sebab you are saying dalam critical, kita buat extra work sikit, uh, maybe you dapat 90% satisfaction. But it could be data yang tipu. Mungkin yang jawab tu semua yes je, semua no je. So you have to be very critical. For me, bila saya buat research, I like to be very positive. Because positive is very easy to write. Kalau 10%, 10%. Kalau 20%, maka 20%. If it's 30%, then it's 30%. It, it cannot go wrong. Okay, it cannot go wrong. So these are some explanation, additional explanation. All right? Now when you go back to your research process, ada macam-macam research process kat sini. Ada research process bermula dengan yang biru ni, topik, literature review, design, measurement, collection, data collection, data analysis, inclusion and integration. This is almost the standard one. Ada yang buat a bit more detail yang bawah ni pula, define the topic, narrow down the topic, gather background information, create the question, uh, number five, develop working thesis, find sources, cite and write. Okay. Yang bawah ni, yang bulat ni, mungkin it's more to a journal paper lah. More to a journal paper. But yet, you still can use it for your research. Uh, yang atas ni pula, yang human, focuses on the, choose a topic, focus on the question, design the study, collect data, analyze, interpret and inform on that. Almost the same juga. Okay. So which one do you want to follow? It's up to you. I cannot tell you that awak wajib dan harus pakai yang bawah ni. Tak. Okay. But in a nutshell, yang bawah ni, yang bawah yang kotak kotak, yang, sorry, the circles below here is not much of relevance. Yang relevant ini ialah banyak yang biru dengan yang human. This is very much relevant. Nah. Okay. This is very much relevant. But again, do not be afraid that you are not doing the same as orang lain. Jangan rasa takut. If your friend is doing literature review but you are uh, you are doing something else, it's still okay. Selagi jangan tidur, tak takpelah. Okay? Uh, if your friend is doing literature, he do what design and asking you oh, design you salah ke apa, it's okay. Jangan risau. Okay? You do not have to be afraid that oh, I might be doing something different. Why is he doing something different? You have to understand, research ni berbeza, ikut bidang. Okay, ikut bidang. My research design is totally different and can be different from Izzat punya. Izzat punya is architecture background. I cannot, saya pun tak boleh cakap, uh, kalau kami di computer science, kami di IT pakai macam ni. I cannot say, I cannot tell you that. The only thing saya boleh share dengan awak ataupun I can relate to you is to be rigorous. Uh, itu sama lah. But my design and my method dalam CS, dalam IT, berbeza. It's different. Okay, berbeza lah dengan your area. Okay, uh, just for your information, selalu orang tanya saya, apa beza computer science dengan IT or IS? Senang je jawapan dia. Computer science looks in programming, okay, uh, hardcore coding lah. Kalau information systems and IT semua, kami melihat the usefulness of that technology. Macam ni lah. Orang computer science makes PS4. Orang IT mengkaji PS4 tu. Apakah kebersihan? How useful is this? Okay. An engineer creates a bicycle. The IS people will study 
how benefit how beneficial is that bicycle? That's what you do. Okay, so kita kaji a PS4 ni. What what what? This technology is there. Is it helping? Okay, is it helping kita? Alright. Uh, computer scientists will create a mobile app. Contohnya a mobile app untuk uh, education. The IT guys or your IS guys will look at is it working? Is this mobile app useful? Yes, no. And then you come to the favorite lah. Yang ni lah. Favorite, antara favorite-favorite yang selalu diperkatakan lah. What is your problem? Kadang-kadang you pun tak tahu. Apa masalah research aku kan? Eh? Rasa dah betul lah. Macam-macam jurnal, rasa jurnal semua dah hebat lah. Saya ingat lagi, bila, when I was doing my PhD in Australia dulu, my supervisor Mak Saleh, kita pun dah tak faham Mak Saleh tu. Mak Saleh cakap apa pun tak faham. Uh, kalau dalam bahasa Melayu tu, kita kata make me understand je lah. Okay. Uh, dia tanya, okay fine, what do you think about this journal? So kita baca lah daripada page 1 sampai page 10 and then we rasa, I think this journal is okay. Then he told me, if the journal is okay, why, why do you want to do your PhD? Tak dah. So you have to be critical. Rasa macam dah. Hebat lah jurnal ni. Semua jurnal saya baca. Hebat lah. Baca yang towards. And then we start looking at a limitation. Macam tu. Okay. Limitation. Alright. So a research problem is a statement about an area of concern. Condition to improve. Troubling question. Or in practice that points to the need for meaningful understanding and deliberate investigation. Okay. What conditions needs to be improved. Right, so kita baca, and then kita baca lagi, and then kita baca lagi. So this problem can happen, it could be because of the current scenario. It could, it could be based on the political issues, okay. It could be because of the weather. The same research problem, kalau kita tengok 10 tahun lepas, mungkin bukan problem. Tapi setelah ekonomi, uh, betul, uh, our political scenario berbeza, our economic scenario berbeza, then it became a problem. Then you get a problem. Then I want to smell me out. The person even on the mark, my camera. I want this new lassi key. Look at stress. Seems new scared. Let me this one. This one. Don't you know? So you will let the car end. Tapi tak apa. Relax je. Okay. These are examples of topic yang saya dapati lah. Daripada building survey, daripada architecture. Eh, ni, kenapa dia ada fashion kat sini? Sebab pelajar semester lepas atau dua semester lepas, seorang budak fashion lah. So, saya terpaksa ambil lah. Belum tukar lagi untuk semester ni lah. Okay. So, ancient temples in Egypt. The architecture of Taj Mahal. Ancient architecture, sustainability, sustainable architecture. So these are some topics. Building survey and environmental safety. Impact of free market on building survey. Building survey and the impact of globalization. Okay. And then uh, yeah, fashion. Lah. Fashion ni menarik juga. Clothing in the Elizabeth era. Understanding, understanding cycles of fashion. Okay. So this was... That's what I saw students come up with topics lah. Okay, so they came up with this topic. Walaupun uh, saya kurang faham, tapi okay lah, these are some topics kalau you nak buat fashion, masih belum terlambat lagi lah kalau you nak tukar eh. So, topic ni menarik juga, the military influence on fashion. If you are interested, rasa nak buat, uh, tak mau buat building survey ke, tak mau buat architecture, boleh lah ke arah military influence on fashion. Tapi saya rasa tak payah lah kan. You stick with whatever you have done. Tak faham lah benda kita kan. And then now you do your famous literature review. Famous literature review. Literature review ni is a lonely process. Ada orang kata lonely lah. Baca, 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 baca. Siang malam baca. Dah habis baca, letak tepi. Dah habis baca, orang letak tepi. Itu kalau ada anak, anak pun tukang baca sekali. Itulah. Okay. You start reading and reading and reading and reading. Alright. But you have to be clever enough. Ada orang uh, baca sehari lima, sehari tiga. Depending on your time. If your reading time is early in the morning, maka buatlah early in the morning. If your reading time is 
malam maka bacalah malam if your reading time is in the jamban maka bacalah dalam jamban itu okey bawalah spek mata bacalah dalam jamban itu sometimes bila masuk toilet that's the time you get ideas okey dapat idea yang so itulah masanya yang kita berada dalam zone kita okey we are in our zone if that is the way to do it then do it lah kunci pintu duduk dalam toilet tu sejam okey dan duduk kat situ no problem okey because literature review is very important because you have to you have to look what others have done what others have been doing and where is that importance okay some people say you have to read the best literature review is five years and below so this is 2023 lima tahun ke bawah betul lima tahun ke bawah but there are certain points macam dalam journal dalam area you yang you have to go back maybe 10 years okay you have to go back maybe 15 years so what that the idea started then okay maybe you're talking about sustainability so you can cari sustainability ni bermula tahun bila when did people talk start talking about sustainability so you have to go back to that era dulu let's say people started uh, venturing into sustainability mungkin 10 tahun lepas. So you have to go back to 10 years to get the proper definition and then maybe you can apply it back to the last five years. A literature review is not simply a shopping list of what others have said. Ali cakap, Abu cakap, Ahmad cakap. Okay, semua orang dah cakap dah. Awak cakap apa? Okay. Yes, memang kita akan bermula macam itu. Ali cakap, Abu cakap, Ahmad cakap. Ali says sustainability is X, Y, Z. Ahmad says sustainability is A, B, C. Abdullah says it's sustainability is this. But you have to synthesize to get the actual concept. Okay. Literature review is organized according to your objective. Okay. objective. It is conceptually organized, synthesized, which ultimately provides a rationale for further research whether by you or by others okay it has to be very very detailed it has to be very very relevant okay so when people read your literature review when your examiners read your literature review they have to have confidence yang you have explored every possible journal or every possible research area you have explained all the terms and there is something good about your research there is something good about your research. So, kalau saya, bila saya evaluate a PhD thesis, obviously, yang pertama, saya akan tengok dia punya title. Okay? So, once I get the title in my head, I will start reading chapter 1 lah. Baca chapter 1, habis. Then, daripada chapter 1, I will start thinking. Kalau chapter 1 ini, kalau topik-topik yang menarik lah, mesti dia side ABC. Dia side, mesti ada dia side beberapa orang penulis terkenal. So immediately saya akan tengok reference. Dia cite tak? Oh betul dia cite. Dia cite lima reference ini. Okay. That means I have confidence that this student has read all the relevant research or all the relevant authors. Okay. So based on the topic, sometimes your examiners will know. Or topic ini mesti dia cite orang ni. Mesti dia cite orang ni, mesti dia cite orang ni. Ada tak yang decide dalam your reference? Kalau ada, memang cantik. So, that means you have already you have already explored guru-guru dalam area ini. But kalau tak ada, then it's a question mark. You dah study habis ke belum ni? You dah baca habis ke belum? Okay. When uh, examiners baca thesis, mereka tidak akan baca daripada chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Tak ada. Mereka akan baca macam saya, chapter 1, then I look to reference. Lepas tu saya tutup balik. So, simpan tepi. Lepas tiga hari lepas tu, saya akan cuba baca balik. Baca sedikit literature review. Okay. Bila saya baca literature review, I will try to understand the back the topic. Oh, dia nak buat on FM. In building, in rural. Okay. Kalau rural, I will try to picture out in my head what is the mind map. Apa area-area yang perlu dibaca. 
Okay. Apakah author-author yang perlu dibaca? Ada tak dalam literature review dia? Ada tak flow tu? Okay. Because writing ni, it's not a simple thing. Just imagine. You are writing something and you are giving to a person who has no knowledge of what you are doing selama tiga tahun. Kena senang. Okay, you have never met this person, you have never met this examiner, you tak tahu rupa dia macam mana, and he does not, he or she does not know what you are writing, what have you been doing, but you are asking him to review your work. It's not going to be simple. Okay, it's not good. Because you are giving someone yang memang tak pernah tahu pun dia wujud. Tak pernah tahu pun dia wujud. Tak pernah tahu pun dia buat apa. Okay, so you have to be very rigorous. Then from literature review, you come to your research question. You may also decide that one of the following means is the most logical way to structure the work of review. You can use different approach. While Jones 1982 argues, Smith also claims. Argue bermaksud, he is not, Jones is not comfortable with that. She argues that it could be other things as well. Okay, let's say our topic is about online shopping. Okay, and when you say argue, meaning you do not agree with someone, you argue well. Okay? You don't agree. The word argument is to disagree, however, is to disagree based on facts. Example, let's say say that the crime rate in Malaysia is going up due to something, due to a lot of foreign workers in Malaysia. Okay? So you want to say no, it's going up not because of this, memang ada. So you argue valid. However, you argue based on certain facts. Okay? Based on certain facts. If it's related, then you say space and Jones both show that kedua-dua mereka ni mengatakan bahawa benda ni sama walaupun ada perbezaan tahun. Both show the same idea. But it could be in different scenarios but both show the idea. Uh, chronological, it means it starts from somewhere and where have it gone. Okay, It started from 86, 87 but later it showed that. Okay, So ada chronological. Okay? Ada chronological. Where do you get it from? <coughs> Articles, database, proceedings, studies, empirical studies, government reports, historical reports, and statist statistical handbook. This is one of the, these are among the main literature review sources. These are some of the journals. Mungkin relevant. Dan ini saya tanya kawan-kawan lah. Okay. Journal of Facility FM, Journal of Facility Building Survey, uh, Malaysia Research Construction Journal, International Journal, okay, ini semua ni lah. Okay. These are some of the uh, journals which are relevant lah. Okay. Research objective. So you start with the question. Have organizations introduced early retirement? You want to identify. Then you want to describe, you want to explore. So these words are all perkataan identify, describe and explore means you want to first find out to do. You want to identify the problems. Then you want to describe them and then you want to explore. Normally, kebiasaannya, Research objective ialah benda-benda yang boleh diukur, can be measured. Ada numbers dia. Okay. So normally, students akan start dengan identify lah normally. Tapi ada juga yang tak, tak ada masalah. Okay. But safe is to identify. Kenapa? Is because they don't want to explore. Want to explore dia. Ada juga macam tu. Research objective are specific actions, activities to answer. Research objective indicates what we are trying to get from the study or the expected results. 
Apa yang kita cuba dapat? We want to study about facility management. So what are we trying to get? Research design, how do you intend to carry? Macam mana you nak buat design? Research design is how you want to do it as an overall, secara keseluruhan. Research method is different. Research design is different. Dalam research method, we can have beberapa method. Sorry, eh? dalam research design, we can have a few methods. Research design, overall, mula-mula, baca journal. Lepas tu, synthesize journal. Question, problem, objective, design questionnaire, what survey, analyze, separate, and result conclusion. That is the overall. But method, okay. Dalam method quantitative, dalam uh, method untuk analyze data, saya menggunakan SPSS dan juga uh, PNS. Okay. And then I use sampling technique apa. Saya pakai persesif uh, ataupun saya pakai teknik apa-apalah. Okay, those are Design is secara keseluruhan. Method ialah in point form. Okay. Research design is the plan to answer your question. Research method is the strategy used. Okay. Research design explore. Conclusive, describe, professional, and single. So, segala kotak-kotak dalam ini ialah method-method dia. Okay. Kalau kita kata cross-sectional, we have to explain. Okay, cross-sectional bermaksud pada satu-satu masa. Contohnya macam ni. Let's say you want to interview an engineer based on his project. Dia dah banyak buat project ni. So, you kata kat dia. Bagi survey, kata, based on your last three years working experience, how many numbers of projects have you done? So he will think, tiga tahun ke belakang berapa? So you give that timeline, cross-sectional. Kaji daripada satu, satu period. Ataupun you kaji in the middle of the project. Bukannya awal, bukannya ni, you kaji kat middle. Tapi, then you say, eh tapi kan dah habis projek. Kena ingat, you kena suruh dia ingatkan balik lah. You have to have questions like, based on your last project, during the intermit period, interim period, what was your major concern? Based on your last project, based on two years ago punya project, during the interim session, what was your major concern? So he knows that, the respondent knows, saya kena tengok projek yang 2 tahun ke belakang tetapi dalam interim period yang tengah-tengah tu. Okey. Uh, exploratory our sales are declining and we don't know why. Would people be interested in our new product? Okey. Describe and causal. Causal yang paling agak we buyers purchase more of a product in a new package so this is based on what is the problem first we are trying to find out all right these are exploratory and it's more sama lah macam tadi so in exploratory research we have to be again clear okay what do we want to explore apa yang kita nak explore kat sini adakah kita nak explore on this topic or kita nak explore semua Again, research, even if you're doing a, a exploratory research, it has to be rigorous, it has to be focused. You cannot say that I want to explore the world. You want to explore FM, okay, specific, FM kat mana, public, private, or you want to explore FM projects, okay, fine. Berapa tahun ni project? Tahun ni? Current, five years ago, ten years ago. Okay, now you say, let's say five years ago. Okay, five years ago. Bahagian mana? Awal project, akhir project, tengah-tengah. 
it's fine. You have to be stay focused again. Okay. Kalau tengah-tengah, then your question would be, tanya respondent, based on your last five years project. Kalau dia ada banyak project ni, you can specify, you can specific. Uh, saya nak mengkaji on the last five years. Because it might be different. Lima tahun lepas punya project and lima tahun kemudian punya project might also be different. Okay. Descriptive is based on numbers. Okay, berapa ramai customer you? Berapa ramai staff? Berapa banyak project? These are numbers only. So, daripada numbers ini, we are going to do something as well. Causal relationship. Okay, I will skip this and I go to this. Uh, what causes this to happen? What causes this to happen? What are the factors from here that cause this? Again, contohnya macam losing weight lah. Saya suka pakai example losing weight. Berlari, puasa dengan beristikah. These are the factors of losing weight. But again, is it a causal relationship? Yes. Adakah kita akan kata, the higher I cycle, the more I will lose weight? Okay, so we have to. And then we also cannot have spurious, saya tu tak pandai, uh, ini, Spurious correlation. Spurious correlation is a correlation yang terjadi, yang tak ada kaitan tapi terjadi. Example, a city's ice cream sales. These sales are highest when the rate of drowning in the city swimming pool is the highest. Orang banyak mati tenggelam tapi ice cream price naik. Hey, uh, uh, apa? Jualan ice cream naik. Apa kaitan orang mati dengan harga jualan ice cream? Okay. Tapi kaitan dia je lah. To allege that the ice cream sales cause drowning would be to imply a spurious relationship between two. Dia sebenarnya macam ni. Bila ramai orang, bila orang kata bila cuaca panas, orang banyak beli ice cream. Okay. So harga jualan ice cream naik. Itu satu senario. Bila cuaca panas, orang ramai pergi berenang. Bila pergi berenang, mati. But you cannot kaitkan, jualan ice cream naik, maka yang ni pun naik. Yang tenggelam pun naik, yang jual ice cream pun naik. There is no relationship. But secara kebetulan saja. Cuaca panas, ice cream naik, betul. Cuaca panas, orang ramai berenang, betul. Dan tenggelam. But they cannot be a relationship between Ice cream dengan orang tenggelam. Apa kaitan dia? It just happens. Be like that. That is called a spurious relationship. Tak ada kaitan pun. Okay, it just happens like that. Okay? Kalau kita ambil dalam akademik scenario, result naik, result student naik, harga makanan pun naik. Apa kaitan result naik dengan harga makanan naik? Okay, there is no kaitan. Tapi mungkin bila result naik dengan harga makanan naik, mungkin Uh, atau keuntungan makanan naik mungkin mungkin student banyak study malam-malam maka dia beli burger banyak-banyak harga burger pun naik, jualan burger naik and then student yang belajar malam-malam ni result dia naik tu so, kita tengok eh burger sales going up, kita tengok budak pun pandai, eh apa kaitan ni adakah kita bukan kata makan burger boleh jadi pandai, tak it's just hanya kebetulan saja eh kebetulan saja alright, contohnya macam sekarang kita ada kafe dekat apa? Di Skandar, dekat kopi. Uh, okay, budak ramai pergi dapat kopi. Oh, ramai dapat kopi. Minum-minum minum kopi, study kat situ. Dan budak-budak yang study dan kopi di dalam kafe ni ke kebetulan budak pandai-pandai. Semua result power power semua. So, adakah kita mengatakan bahawa minum kopi bagus untuk jadi apa? pandai? Okay, there is no other thing. Hanya kebetulan saja. Okay, hanya kebetulan saja. Alright, I think we should take a five uh, short break untuk kita memikirkan masalah soalan negara kita. Alright, so now is 9.20. Uh, let's start back in 9.30 boleh? Okay. Boleh, Doktor. Uh, we take a short break, 9.30, kita sambung balik and we will see how much can we continue. Alright? Okay. Uh, if you have any questions, boleh tanya nanti ataupun uh, you ada soalan sekarang. Sofa belum ada, Dr. Belum ada lagi. InsyaAllah, okay. InsyaAllah, okay. Ha. So, you now, what we have done so far? 
we have looked at all the elements, skip, 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 right? So you have to get these elements dulu. Kita dah tengok literature review, kita dah tengok process dia sikit, paradigm dia sikit, research design dia sikit, apa namanya, method dia sikit. Okay, all of these are processes. And I'm sure you are all going through this process little by little now. Okay, so we will start uh, back in about 9.30, macam tu, uh, 10 minutes break, okay? Okay. Let's continue back when we left off. She can do the KL as well. You did that. Which part of KL are you staying? Uh, Bandar Menjelara. Dekat dengan Kepong. Kepong. Okay, okay. So, every day daripada sana ke tempat kerja buat uh, 40 minutes macam tu? Yeah. Oh, tak sampai sebab uh, kalau pakai Duke 2, tak sampai setengah jam lah, 20 minutes. Kalau jam pun. So far. Oh, ada Duke 2 <laughs> Duke 2. Uh -huh. Sebab dari rumah saya keluar jalan besar terus naik Duke 2. I see, I see. Hmm. Okay. Saya asal gombak. Dia dekat Duke juga lah. Tapi Duke satu lah kot. Okay. So let's continue where we left out. Okay. Okay, now let's go into this one. Sorry. Okay, nampak? Population versus sample size. Population versus sample size. So, from this figure, senang tu. Population is the whole population, but sample size is just a bit of the population. So, does it mean that population ialah semua rakyat Malaysia? No, it does not mean that way. Population can mean the number of engineers, but you be specific, civil engineers. So a population can be some more engineers, but a sample you only choose engineers or civil engineers working in contractor class A companies. Or sample engineers with five years, five to ten years experience. So those are sample. But secara keseluruhan, you have engineers lah. So macam mana kita nak tahu jumlah engineer? So we have to refer to the board ke engineer daftar ke. That's how we do it. That's how we get the population, right? And based on the population, you work on your sample. Sample ni based on your research lah, your work. What are you looking at? Are you looking for uh, civil, electrical, five years, 10 years, baru grad, overseas grad, project, certain project. We nak tahu engineer yang pernah bekerja in project solar, uh, project buat jalan. These are your sample. Sample is more specific, it's more focused, then population. Population is secara keseluruhan. Okay. Secara keseluruhan. Alright. Uh, so, population measurable quality is called parameter. Okay, parameter. The population is a complete set. Uh, can you just hold on for two seconds? Okay. Sorry, mak dia di KL nak dia nak merajuk dia hantar message kat mak dia kenapa tak angkat telefon so, mak dia tak balik anak dah tidur dah okay. dia bila daddy jaga je jadi macam ni mak selama ni okay okay je Tapi bila dia malam je, dia sikit lah. Kalau mak dia, kalau pagi lagi senang. I just bagi dia tuala, siapkan diri. Jadi siap. Kalau mak dia menjadi jerit semua. Daddy jaga senang je. Cuma ada masalah menangis-nangis lah. Tapi perlu. All in control lah. All in control. Dia senang je. Kalau nak makan, makan apa? Boleh tercanai. 
dia kenapa tak bagi nasi kenapa tak bagi mi jadi macam mana kau nak senang je alright so let's go back oh, oh semua okay di sana you all okay there okay doktor saya bagi saya janji kelas tengah jam lagi je oh, 25 minit lagi je daripada sini saya nampak awak di sana macam kalau saya sorongkan bantal Sikit nampak mengantuk tu. Tak mahu lagi. Sekejap eh, sorry ni. Alamak. As I was saying, population is Measurable quality is called parameter. Population is a complete set. Okay, complete set. The number of engineers. Complete set. Sample, subset of a population. Subset. Civil engineers. If you want to go into double subset or subset yang lagi uh, specific, civil engineers with working experience. Berapa tahun? Okay, so that is sample. Population is a whole, right? So you have no I mean we are not required to find a, pop, a population. Lah. Okay, kenapa kita ada sample and kenapa kita ada population? Based on your sample, you are able to generalize balik on your population. You boleh what generalization? But you have to you have to get a good sample lah. Let's say, betul. Civil engineers berdaftar di Malaysia or di Kuala Lumpur is about, let's say lah, senang kira 500 orang. Daripada civil engineers yang berdaftar ini, uh, you are looking at those people yang bekerja di syarikat kelas A. So, ada 100. So, based on that, can you generalize balik okay, the engineers back to the population? That is very important. So, when you want to determine the sample size, Accuracy, number of different variables, and your resources. But because you also look at this, berapa banyak set variables are you looking at? How many variables are you looking at? What are variables? Variables are elements that you are looking at. Certain certain elements that you are looking at for research. Losing weight. You are running. You are element running. You are apa namanya? Cycling. You are looking at Fasting, so these are the elements. So the number of elements also determines your sample size as well. And the most importantly, resource and time lah. Okay, kalau kita nak cari semua population kita, tak payah lah. Okay, because we have so many, you have no time to get 500 orang. Okay, and you might find it, even kalau you jumpa, you have time, you might find that the answers that you get are not valid sometimes. I'm sure some of us, Bila jawab soalan survey, yes, no, buat better macam ulang. Well, that is normal. Okay, that is why bila masuk survey, people say don't do too long. Jangan buat sampai 60 soalan. Walaupun 60 soalan tu, dia kata alah satu soalan half a minute. It's about what, half a minute, 30 saat. Lepas tu nak fahamkan bahasa, 30 saat, 60 soalan, well, it's very long. So that's why research, yes, betul, in the 80s, in the 90s, you have long surveys. But over time, they found out that with shorter surveys, you can still get the same answer pun. Okay. Satu element, mungkin satu variable, you pakai dalam 3-4 soalan, dah cukup memadai dah. Okay. And then you also have language barrier, so you have to think of all this as well. So data collection is a few types. You can do survey, poll, interview, okay, focus group, pun boleh juga. So what is focus group? Focus group is you gather a set of people, expertise, and then you give them a topic, you ask them to discuss, the moderators. Voila. And based on that, you observe them. Let's say you want to find out kepuasan hati pelanggan. It's a topic. So you talk about this. Orang semua ni talk about this. Then, awak pilih orang moderator. But you, as the researcher, you cannot be there. 
then you observe the way they talk. Kalau if a participant agrees, macam mana perubahan mata dia? Macam kalau uh, dia agree tu macam mana? Adakah dia saja buat buat ke macam mana? So that's why some focus group dia akan letak kamera semua tau. Dia nak tengok air muka orang tu macam mana. Adakah dia orang mendengar? Adakah dia orang ni macam tak tak puas hati? Okay. Macam sekarang kalau saya letak kamera dekat muka-muka awak ni, mata tu dia nampak dah. Memikirkan masa depan. Ya Allah. Bukan mamat ni tengah cakap. Oh, kalau dapat tidur waktu ini, ataupun aku dapat kopi malam ni, semua sedap. Okay, ini ini example, example, sebagai example je. Okay, alright. And then you can also look at secondary data, government reports, statistical report, okay, financial report daripada internet, daripada berita Astro Awani bernama, boleh, tak ada masalah. Buat siakap keli pun tak boleh lah. That is rumours. Okay, itu semua tak boleh lah. Melody kat TV tak boleh lah. Okay, itu semua tak boleh. But you are looking at berita, talk shows. Ini boleh. These are good. Because you are getting prominent people. Then boleh, tak ada masalah. But if you are getting like TikTok creator, content developer, apa? What do you call that? Huh? Content huh? Content creator sekarang ni. Okay, yang cakap pasal makanan walaupun dia orang bukan background makanan. Dia orang cakap, oh makanan ini sedap. Uh, it's juicy, it's nice, it's pedas, tak cukup pedas. But if you get a statement, let's say from a chef, that, that's good. Okay, because he's an expert on that matter. But if you get uh, uh, an advice or uh, a statement from a content creator, okay, then you pernah dengar tak content creator sekarang bercakap? Bila dia bawa makanan, oh makanan ni sedap, tak, uh, pedas dia cukup-cukup je. What is the definition of pedas dia cukup-cukup? Maksudnya dia pedas, tapi dia cukup-cukup je pedas dia. But does it, it's yes or no, it's, it's very, ini kan. Tapi dia kata, cukup masin, cukup masam. Ada skill ke? Kita nak measure masam manis ni, okay? So, these are not permittable in academic research. How do you analyze data? Macam saya kata tadi, quantitative, qualitative. Then you can also use mixed method to combine, okay? Uh, kalau di overseas, Secara general ni, secara you are allowed to do triangulation. Di mana you buat survey, you get the results, and you buat another method, one a qualitative focus group, and then you compare. Ya yeah, ada kesamaan. Or you can only do satu survey dapat jawapan dia, and that's it. Okay, so it's always best to do triangulation lah. Tapi ada juga yang hanya buat satu pun tak ada masalah. But that this is depending on your supervisor as well. I feel qualitative or either one, qualitative or the qualitative cukup memadai lah. Cukup lah. But it depends on your supervisor and your topic of interest juga. Ada mungkin you tak jawab, mungkin you cannot get enough sample, then you have to support with qualitative research as well. Quantitative research is easier, not to say easy to do, but it has a, a linear path. There are the steps that you can buat. Ini, 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 tu. That's it. There are the steps there, and it's very clear lah. So when we talk about quantitative research, normally we are talking about hypotheses. We are talking about causal effect. We are talking about numbers. So kita akan dapat numbers, you're talking about 50%, 60%. It had a p-value, it had a factor analysis, all the numbers lah. Okay. But believe me, if you start doing quantitative research, you are able, because quantitative research ni, permulaan dia susah. You have to get the survey right. Bayangkan if you don't get the survey questions right, you dah hantar soalan survey, and then you dapat balik, oh, silap soalan dia. Susah. You nak suruh. Uh, orang jawab balik, it's very difficult. So the, the, the difficult part of doing uh, quantitative is always the beginning. But once you get it right, once you have what survey to, once you get the numbers, it's easy to analyze. It's about the other standard here. You can analyze and write it within 10 days. 10 hari, seminggu boleh buat. So benda tu is straightforward. But the most difficult part is the beginning part. 
if you're doing quantitative, you're also looking at causal assumption uh, explanation. You want to explain something, some scenario, but based on the numbers. Matahari, ice cream, sunburn. Okay, you want to see how to explain this scenario. So you have to get some sort of numbers, let's see. Percentage. Raporang suka, raporang suka, suka. Uh, qualitative, you want to find the immersed data. Apa yang terkandung kat situ? Cara dia cakap, dia cakap saya suka, let's say you ask, awak suka pergi tengok wayang. Nah, saya suka tengok wayang, things like that. Tapi dia tak guna perkataan suka, dia guna benda lain. And you pun cannot ask, you suka tengok something tak? You suka makan ice cream tak? Maybe you can say, in one week, how many times you eat ice cream? 10, 20. Kalau dia kata 20 tu, you can assume that Sebenarnya so, dia suka lah tu. In one week or in one month, how many times do you eat fish? Dia kata, I eat fish about again, five, six times. So we can say that he does not like fish. You cannot ask a direct question. You suka makan ikan, tak? That is very direct. You cannot, in academic research, you cannot go direct. You have, kalau macam tu, senang lah. Senang lah kerja you. You suka tak ni? You suka tak? Tak boleh. We have to get something yang immerse yang terkandung sebalik itu. Right? Let's say you're doing something on facilities or satisfaction. You cannot ask a few person, even though dalam survey, how satisfied are you? Maybe you, you, you can say how positive are you? Has, or you can ask questions such as uh, has the management given you a bonus? Kalau dia kata yes, or has the management or is the management concerned about the health being of their employees? So that shows kalau management itu concern, it might also lead to dissatisfaction as well. Okay. Uh, data analysis, kalau dalam uh, qualitative, okay, so you have to gather the data, you have to read, you have to write, then you have to quote the data, you have to look at the data, apakah yang terkandung kat sini, apa yang dicuba disampaikan. If the respondent says, I eat ice cream five times in a month, that itself you can conclude, oh, they need to ice cream. But you don't ask, you suka makan ice cream, tak? You don't ask that. You go around slowly and ask them to answer all that. Right? And then stages of data, a quantitative data analysis, we do descriptive, then kita adalah central tendency, uh, this one we, kita akan buat nanti lah and inferential statistic, infer, inferential statistic. This is your data analysis. Lah. Yeah, inferential statistic is based on the data kita cuba infer, we try to make sense. If they say that they eat ice cream 30 times per month, sah-sah lah kita boleh kata dia ni suka makan ice cream rupanya. We try to infer that. Or let's say in one week, how many times do you eat nasi ganda? Kata once. Or in last six months, how many times have you visited the doctor? Or the kata last six months, baru sekali. So we can infer that this person is healthy. Boleh infer macam tu. Alright. Uh, research method, macam tadi saya kata, ada survey, ada eksperimen, ada case study dan macam-macam lagi lah. Alright. So this is the method. Yang tadi semua is just the design. How are you going to do? What are you going to do? Method is more specific. Okay. Yes, you say you want to do qualitative data. Tapi macam mana you nak buat qualitative data? Adakah you nak buat eksperimen? Adakah you nak buat observation? Focus group? So observation, focus group dan lain-lain ni ialah method-method dia. Design ialah secara keseluruhan. Okay, how do you do this question? I'll do that. Uh, I'll do. Uh, I'll get the question from the literature, and then based on that, I'll devise my hypothesis, and then I'll do my uh, method, questionnaire, and so on and so forth. That is the design. But if I want to go into detail, then I go into my research method. Okay, I think we should seriously stop now. Because I do not want to continue this because this uh, research method is linking with the next week's slide. Okay. 
kalau dia boleh, kalau dia start sekarang, dia kena sambung dengan next week punya pasal descriptive analysis. Alright. So here is talking about the methods, survey, case study is only. This is good and conceptual study. This is good if we link it to next week punya study lah. Alright. So I think we should stop here uh, in slide 345. Alright. And we will continue back in next week, hari yang sama juga. So we stop here. Okay. Do you have any questions you want to ask? So what have we done today? We have learned about the process, the beginning. We have learned about the paradigm. Kita dah belajar sedikit bahasa quantitative, qualitative, perbezaan dia. We have also touched about population, sample. Okay, we have touched about this. Okay. And then we have also talked about, in general, uh, research design. Okay. Uh, what else have we talked about? Causal relationship, spurious uh, relationship. Okay, we have talked about that. And to end this class today, what we have we done in just a slide sebelum ini, we have talked about the research design. Ingat, research design is keseluruhan. Method is the individual methods. Research, does literature review to be, sorry, does research, sorry, does research, ah, does literature review is included, is the literature review included inside the research design? Yes. Literature review is part of your research design. Kenapa? Sebab, macam saya kata tadi, research design ialah keseluruhan. Macam mana you sampai kat sini? Mula-mula saya datang dengan soalan. Lepas tu saya buat saya punya literature review. Lepas tu saya buat method. Lepas tu saya buat survey. Lepas tu saya put it data, saya analyze dan so on so on. That is the design. Tapi dalam method, saya pakai method apa? Saya pakai survey. Saya pakai focus group. Okay. Design is secara keseluruhan. Method is only one part. Okay. Dalam, is there a specific method of doing literature review? Ada. Ada method untuk buat literature review. Ada orang pakai teknik Matrix. Ha, ada, ada tu. Bukannya, bukan, bila kita baca literature review tu, it's not only reading. No. Bila you dah baca 70, 80, 100, 200. Now, how are you going to put everything together? You dah baca banyak ni. Dalam kepala ni ada banyak ni. Kalau saya pecahkan kepala awak semua, keluar, keluar research tu. Keluar, keluar literature tu. But how do you, how do you fix it? You ada method you sendiri. You letak dalam Mendeley ke, Endnote ke, you based on, based on topics. Ada ada student buat, suka buat based on topic. Okay, dia baca ni, oh ini topik pasal construction. Ini topik pasal education. Ini topik pasal business. Bagi kan. And from there, you generalize balik. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, is that, uh, is that, Shikin ada soalan? Fat tak ada, kata clear. Okay, clear. Memang, memang clear, memang clear. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for attending kelak-kelak malam ini. Uh, kalau you nak saya sambung, saya boleh sambung. Tapi itu soalan cepu mas lah. Okay, alright. Siapa sambung, saya bagi satu markah tambahan lah. Alright, so we will stop here at our research method dan insyaAllah nanti kita akan sambung next week daripada slide ini sampai slide yang descriptive uh, analysis. Uh, Assalamualaikum Puan Janah, apa khabar di sana? Waalaikumsalam, maaf doktor saya menjaga budak tes. Oh, okay, oh, oh menjaga budak tes pun. Oh, okay. Malam-malam pun ada tes, okay lah. Uh, uh, untuk tiga kod kat dek dia. Selamatlah menjaga tes di sana ya. Okay. Thank you so much for attending the class even though you kena jaga exam. Uh, itulah pengorbanan seorang pencarah two in one. Okay, jaga test dan juga belajar at the same time. Okay. Uh, InsyaAllah uh, we are going to stop here at research method and we are going to continue uh, next week on research method and descriptive analysis. Okay. Sebab dia berkait, berkait kat situ. Alright. Thank you so much. InsyaAllah I will see you in the next class. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr.
Assalamualaikum. Selamat beristirahat. Pada bolehlah yang kena jaga exam jagalah. Uh,